Hey guys, David Miller, Phoenix, Arizona Multimedia Artist. I have fallen in love with a new YouTube channel called Cartoonist Kayfabe. It's Ed Piscor, Jim Rugg, and Tom Scioli. And a lot of times they do this little show and tell thing where they bring out uh, comics that are of a particular variety and show you what they own or what they got from the library that are good examples of those. Like bootleg comics was a recent topic. Uh, I felt like doing a little show and tell of my own inspired by Cartoonist Kayfabe's channel. So I'm gonna show you some pieces that I was gifted over the years. I'm gonna start with a sculpture of myself and my wife Vesna. Uh, this is actually what went on top of our wedding cake. It was made by my friend Dan Richters. He is an artist who lives in Omaha, Nebraska, where I'm originally from. And uh, currently Dan is a pretty well-known clothing designer. He makes very unusual pieces that reflect kind of like uh, an alien vibe. You might look at his stuff and might think H.R. Giger, but the thing about Dan is he has a really pure and noble heart. So whereas Giger is kind of like an obsessed sex freak weirdo, Dan's stuff has like, if, if other worlds were nice places that we visited. And so I'm really honored to have this statue from Dan. I've had it for almost 20 years now. Uh, got a little bit of a chip on my wife's nose, but other than that, I think it's a great likeness of us. And you know what, we are just wearing denim bottoms and gray top. She's got a cool gray hoodie. Like, that's who I am as a person. I think Dan captured it perfectly. This piece is by someone I met as a model, but they're also an incredible uh, visual artist. Her name was Glass Olive. And this is a little bit of pencil work, a little bit of watercolor. On the back, it's got a little story. I'll go ahead and read it to you. It says, Claire had to sneeze, but didn't know the proper etiquette. So she sniveled, and she snorked, and she snorted, and really tried to avoid it. She tried so hard, her face stuck, and her sneeze was lodged in her brain until the end. And it's from 2011, but uh, this has been in a prominent place in our craft room in our house ever since then. This is also from 2011. It's an illustration by my friend in Los Angeles, Jamie Graydon. Jamie, I know as a body painter, uh, she's also a face painter. She does a lot of like, festival type of stuff and she has created her own line of leggings that have her kind of floral illustrated style. She actually made this superhero, I believe for my daughter and my daughter would have been something like three or four at the time. Uh, but we've still hung on to this. One of the things about Jamie's art is usually it's very colorful and this is just stark black and white. But I have to tell you guys, I probably prefer stark black and white artwork in all walks of my life. You know, the stuff that I make, the stuff that's my favorite is the black and white. This piece I got on a trip to Australia in 2007. It was part of a uh, sort of connecting cultures venture. We had a lot of Native Americans from Arizona meeting with an indigenous community in Australia and they were having an art sale there. I saw this piece, I offered to buy it. The person from the indigenous community that I was talking to said, I'm sorry, that one's not for sale. And then at the end of our trip, they gave it to me, which I thought was amazing. They saw that I was interested, they saw I was willing to part money with it and they said no, only for it to be like a happy surprise at the end of the trip. Here's a mixed media piece from a guy I knew in Omaha named Caleb Kopic, now lives in Portland. I believe he is a highfalutin graphic designer there. Uh, it also has a story on the back of it. I'll tell you about the front first. It comes from, I think, a time when Caleb was really influenced by an artist named Ashley Wood. It also reminds me of Jim Ma Food a little bit, uh, but it is just wild. It has like explosions of color on some sections and other sections are just pure black and white and you get to see that natural cardboard underneath it. I'm a big fan of leaving the substrate visible. I'm also a big fan when people are working with like cardboard or hard matte board as their substrate as opposed to something like canvas or printmaking paper. I mean, this, this is just kind of an industrial feel to it and he has a lot of metallic inks. I'm not sure if it's showing up on the camera, but uh, big fan of this piece. Always had a place of prominence in our house. On the back, in cursive, silly, shrieky, the shrill, shrew, will chew 
and when he's chew will shriek and chew okay i can't read this um but it's pretty interesting we got a tiny little shrew written on the back moving on to a more recent piece uh, this is from a local phoenix artist photographer named josue orozco and i actually saw this in a gallery on Grand Avenue in Phoenix, and I was stunned, number one, because I thought this was a model I had shot before named Annie Montgomery, but it's not. Uh, number two, I wasn't really aware of other local photographers who had such a like strong artistic aesthetic that also was dark and also uh, was kind of fashion-y. And Josue works, I think, almost exclusively with agency fashion models, but he does this incredible work and uh, was visiting him at his house, and he totally just gifted it to me straight there. One of the things I love about this is the headpiece on the model has this segment that's a whole bunch of safety pins. And, you know, I never asked Josue how this was made, if it was done in camera, if it was done in Photoshop. We got a little uh, tri face going on here. It definitely feels like an in camera double exposure. Of course, I really don't think it matters how it was made, but I'm so curious. And I'm also curious uh, what inspired this look with the safety pins because I've seen people do things with safety pins before, band-aids, you know, kind of like common household items, but this has like an intention to it. It kind of reminds me of Hellraiser a little bit, the Clive Barker uh, movie series. There's a character named Pinhead in it, um, but this isn't scary at all. It's really elegant, otherworldly. This is the kind of artwork I love to have up in my house. And then lastly, this is something that's a bit of a collaboration between me and John Arvisu. He goes by Trapdoor Studio. Uh, so it was my original photograph of a model named Mosh. And at the studio we were at, there was a one-eyed cat that Mosh was playing with. Uh, John's a printmaker. He took my original piece did an edition, I believe, of 10, and then gifted me one of those. I'm such a huge fan of printmaking, and I'm no good at it myself. I took it in college and uh, didn't get anywhere. Every so often, I think I should really get into printmaking. I should really get into printmaking. And, you know, to do something the level that John does, you have to have maybe like a decade of experience under your belt. So, if there are any future collaborations I can do with other printmakers, I look forward to that so much because. Uh, it's one thing to see a photograph you took and then sort of know the process of, well, I did this in Lightroom, I did this in Photoshop, so on and so forth, I did this with the lighting. But when you see it reinterpreted in a really stunning graphic design style, um, it, for me, it's super, super heartwarming. And it becomes something that's a little more iconic than the photograph that I already know the history of. Once again, we've got silver metallic inks all over the place. We've got areas where this big swipe of color that doesn't really match anything that's on the photo, but uh, elevates it, I think, with a little bit of chaos and something that's otherwise orderly. And of course, because it's printmaking, every one of his prints was a little bit different. I wish I had images of the other nine to share with you so we could like compare and contrast what the differences are in the printmaking process. But as it is, I love this piece and I'm so honored to have it in my house. If you're an artist out there and you have a bunch of stuff in your closet, I highly encourage you to just pull it out and think about who would benefit from having this, who would love to have this, who would appreciate it and allow it to live because the artwork that you have boxed up, the artwork you have in a closet, it's not alive. It doesn't have an audience. Uh, if you've had it boxed up or in a closet for a long period of time, you've had it there for years, it's pretty likely that it will never sell. I know as indie artists, uh, selling our stuff is so important to being able to pay bills, to be able to live, but there's always gonna be a chunk of material that you can't sell that is just rotting away. Why not give it away? Why not have it in the hands of somebody who's gonna appreciate it? That's how your art is going to live. Uh, whether you sold it for $15, $500, or $0, and you put it in the house of somebody who's gonna appreciate it, uh, that is the ultimate goal, I think. Thanks for watching, check out my other videos, talk to you next time.